Hey, what's up? It's Aaron with Warp Academy. In this video, I'm going to be covering Isotope's Break Tweaker plugin, and it's a plugin that really intrigues me because of its multifunctionality, and it has some really cool implications for how it can be used in a creative process and also for live performance. So if you've already decided that you want to buy it, I've left some links below that uh, will bring you to the shop and you can pick it up for yourself. Plus, I have a free download that's included with this video, and you can find that link down there too. First, I'll go over the graphic interface so you know where and what everything is. Then I'll cover all the key features with demos so you can avoid reading the bulk of the user manual. With that said, it's never a bad idea to pop open the user manual for a little light reading over a cup of coffee. Oh, looks like I'm running low. Hmm. Break Tweaker is more than just a beat sequencer. It's also a signal generator that supports morphing wavetable synthesis. It supports six sequencers called tracks, and each track allows you to sequence wave or AIFF audio files or create your own sounds with the built-in synths. You can stack up to three generators for each track and sculpt the sound using a combination of envelope and LFO modulators filters, distortion, and some basic effects. One of the key features of Break Tweaker is its micro-edit engine, used for step-based, glitchy chops, gating, and re-triggering effects. We'll get into all of these in more depth in a second. Each of the six tracks can be lengthened independent from one another, which creates some great opportunities for complex polyrhythms that get more interesting over time. For example, you could have something simple like one track being one bar long while the other track is four bars long, or something a bit more interesting like combining odd and even numbered track lengths. In Break Tweaker Lingo, together all of your tracks and their individual sequences are called a pattern. You can have up to 24 patterns, which are each triggerable using one finger and your MIDI controller, or one note in a MIDI clip. Now this functionality seemed a bit weird to me at first until I discovered that you can jump between patterns seamlessly on the fly by overlapping MIDI notes in a clip, or in this case by adding a random note generator and an arpeggiator to randomly vary the beat every time it plays, which really gives it a more natural sort of jam style feel. Let's look at something I created using Break Tweaker, and then I can dissect all of its features and workflow in greater detail. I'm battling hard against circadian rhythms. My body, mind dynamic, it's a widening schism. So I pick myself up, drag my body to the kitchen. Gotta prepare myself a cup of liquid ambition. My weapon of choice is French, and it's sure to impress. It makes it the way I like it, and it does it the best. Grind the beans fresh, put the water on to boil. Avoid the paper filters cause it absorbs all the oil. It gives me laser focus and it's tasty AF. I'm sure you'll enjoy my lyrics if you don't mind my breath. Helps with early mornings that are hard to endure. It'll get the heart pumping, body moving for sure. If you've got a case of lazy, I think you know the cure. Copy's my favorite break next to Break Tweaker. Just before we get going, I'd like to invite you to join our collective by hitting that subscribe button and activating notifications. That way, you won't miss a beat and you'll get the heads up on all the things as soon as we post them. When I started this video, I knew I wanted to do something with found sounds, but before I got into doing the sound design portion, I wanted to find some inspiration from the included pattern library, because why not? To access the pattern library and the presets, you just have to click up in the preset area, and then you'll see all of them here. You get a bunch of cinematic textures, modern grooves, and vintage machines. I began composing the track by finding a preset rhythm from the included library that had a feel that I could groove to. I chose this set of patterns from the Vintage Machines category. I mentioned earlier that patterns can be triggered with one MIDI note, either from a clip or connected to a MIDI controller. You can trigger all 24 patterns using MIDI notes from C2 all the way up to B3. 
The notes from C1 to F1 are used for triggering your generators as one-shots. Now, if you overlap two notes, Break Tweaker will begin playing the pattern that was triggered last, but continue playing from the exact spot the previous pattern left off on. If the two notes don't overlap, the second pattern would trigger from its beginning. I wanted to create an environment for some happy accidents to happen while I was composing, so I created a MIDI effect rack to help create a bit of controlled randomness in the drum beat. I've also included that as a download if you don't feel like building it yourself. So I wanted to create a way of triggering patterns in Break Tweaker randomly, but have the MIDI notes overlap, so instead of re-triggering each pattern from the start of the sequence, it would continue from where each sequence left off, which would make a fairly seamless way of combining rhythms and generating something new. So first I added a MIDI clip to my arrangement with a sustained C2 note all the way across. To create the first randomly generated note, I added an arpeggiator MIDI effect with play order selected and set the distance to zero semitones because I don't want the arpeggiator to trigger outside of the octave. To create the randomness, I added the random MIDI device with chance turned all the way up so it will always generate a random output. I restricted the random device to one scale. The final piece to this is the note length device which just sustains the incoming MIDI notes so that we can be sure there will be some overlap between the two note generators. I've collected these three devices in a rack by hitting Command G on a Mac or Control G on a PC. The final step here is to duplicate this effect chain by opening the chain list, selecting our chain and hitting Command D on a Mac or Control D on a PC. I've also added some macros to the included device for some extra control over the range of patterns just in case the preset you're using isn't utilizing all 24 of the pattern slots. And one to adjust the re-triggering rate. A higher re-triggering rate will create a more complex combination of patterns, while a lower rate will preserve the pattern and uh, switch them up less frequently. Now since the beat changes slightly every time it loops, it produced a bunch of rhythm variations to choose from. So just a quick pro tip, if you're having problems with Break Tweaker being out of time with your arrangement, just hit that sync button at the bottom of the interface. That will automatically detect the tempo of your session. In Ableton Live, if you want to record each of Break Tweaker's outputs independently and capture some of these randomly generated rhythms we've made, here's what you do. In the Break Tweaker interface on the right side of each track is an option to switch the output from the internal mixer, labeled with an M, to a channel number from 1 to 6. I'll set each of these tracks to the number associated with their order in the interface, but if you wanted to combine tracks for any reason, you can select the same channel number for each one you'd like to combine. Now, create the appropriate number of audio tracks in Ableton. I'm going to create four because the kit I'm using in Isotope Break Tweaker only has four sounds. Now, in the I.O. section of each of your tracks, first select the track that Break Tweaker is on, then the channel number underneath. If you want to hear the input signal, set the monitor section to IN. Select Record Arm for each of these tracks. Remember to hold Command on a Mac or Alt on a PC to record arm multiple tracks. Now you're ready to record. Okay, hit that record button and let her go for a while to capture the magic. At the beginning of the video when I was preparing myself a cup of joe, I recorded some audio samples that I really wanted to use as percussive instruments for this track. So let's first look at a snare drum I created using this sound the sound of pouring coffee beans, plus a combination of two synth generators. First, I selected the section of my recording I wanted to use as part of my snare. I consolidated that section of the audio using Command-J on my Mac, or you could use Control-J if you're on a PC. Break Tweaker has a one minute sample length limit, so you're gonna have to keep your samples short. I was really happy to find that I can just simply drag the audio clip right into the Break Tweaker interface. 
Otherwise, if I wanted to search for a sample on my hard drive or in the preset library, I can use this area here. First, let's choose from the filter options to remove any sub-frequencies in this sample and tune the sound by boosting the resonance and finding a nice pitch for our snare rattle. I'm also going to apply a bit of distortion to the sound to give it a loudness boost and a bit more oomph. Next, let's add in a bit of snap by activating a second generator. This time, I'm going to choose Synth. I want to use something resembling white noise in this case, so I'll use a wavetable in the Linear Complex category, and I found one called Noise. As you can see here, there's a huge collection of preset wavetables to choose from, and each one has its own vibe, especially when you modulate the table position using an envelope or LFO like this. Okay, back to the snare snap. This is a bit too pitchy for me, so I'll turn on FM modulation by clicking here, and I'll select another noise waveform to modulate our carrier signal. Okay, and there we go. You can adjust the AHDSR, or attack, hold, decay, sustain, and release here. You can also attach up to four of the envelopes to nearly any parameter in the synth generator by using these dropdowns. In this case, I just want to adjust the amplitude over time, which is the default setting. I'll also adjust the filter and resonance to remove unnecessary low frequencies and boost the snappy area around 4K. Finally, I want to add a bit more body to my snare, so I'll add in a second noise generator and filter it with more emphasis on those mid-frequencies. Nice, and there it is, a coffee bean snare. So I used this same process to create a kick drum from a moment I accidentally bumped the microphone and a hi-hat-ish sound from a recording of my coffee bag crumpling. The last thing I want to show you in Break Tweaker is its micro-edit engine. Micro-edits are applied to a single note in a Break Tweaker sequence. Now, micro-edits cause the generators on that note's track to repeat or get chopped up at a rapid rate. This is an effect similar to copying a tiny selection of audio and pasting it over and over and over and over again to create a buzzing or stuttering effect. There are a number of parameters to define how the note's micro-edit sounds. The parameters can be broken into four groups, type, slope, gate, and step effects. To apply micro-edits to your patterns, first select the step you'd like to mangle. At the bottom on the interface, the controls for the micro-edit engine, pitch, and effect will display. There are four micro-edit modes, divisions, pitch, time, and speed. Divisions allows you to manually choose the number of divisions, and it sounds like this. Pitch creates an audio rate frequency that's possible to set a buzz at an exact musical note. The pitch mode allows you to set the note value of the micro-edit, and it sounds like this. In time mode, you're able to set the micro-edit divisions to occur at a musical note interval such as 64th notes. And speed allows you to set the micro-edit's audio rate frequency to a specific hertz value. There's a huge selection of slope types for interesting sound mangling, the default being BT, which creates an upward or downward division frequency slope. The control below the micro-edit mode dropdown updates depending on the mode that you're in. This will control either the amount of the effect, the note being generated by the audio rate frequency, the rhythm of the divisions, and the hertz value of the audio rate frequency. 
you can use the tension and rotate parameters to apply and modify the distribution of each of the micro edits. In the gate area, you get some control over the silence and fades between each of the micro edit divisions. Overall, this is an amazing tool for generating new ideas, for live performances, and for general sound mangling. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you found that this video was useful, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll get an alert every time we post something new. And if you wanted to pick up Break Tweaker for yourself, I've also left a link in the description that you can use to go straight to the store. I'm Aaron, we are Warp Academy, and until next time, be excellent to each other. I'm battling hard against circadian rhythms. My body, mind, dynamic, it's a widening schism. So I pick myself up, drag my body to the kitchen. Gotta prepare myself a cup of liquid ambition. My weapon of choice is French, and it's sure to impress. It makes it the way I like it, and it does it the best. Grind the beans fresh, put the water on to boil. Avoid the paper filters, cause it absorbs all the oil. It gives me laser focus, and it's tasty AF. I'm sure you'll enjoy my...